Hello, and welcome to our AI Lab Hot Item. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Kai Senner, the Head of Office and Digital Policy Advisor for MEP Axel Voss in the European Parliament. Kai is heavily involved in the political negotiations on the AI Act and the AI Liability Directive, and is surprisingly transparent about these procedures. Kai is also a member of the OECD.AI Network of Experts since 2021. He was awarded Best MEP Assistant in 2023 and ranked 13th in Politico's Power 40 this year. The reason? A key AI Act trilogue taking place next week. Let's hear what Kai has to say. And thanks for the invitation. Um, yes, I will give a short summary of where we are standing right now uh, with the AI Act um, negotiations. Um, as many of you probably know, next Tuesday will be another political trial look. And then the current thinking is that we have a last one on the 6th of December. And on the 6th of December, the big aim is to really um, close uh, the negotiations and manage a political deal, which would allow us to yeah, go through all the votings in the European Parliament, in the Council of the European Union, let the lawyer linguists check the text, the legal service, um, do translations in those, yeah, I think, 24 um, languages, and also have the publication in the um, EU official journal. So uh, really, um, yeah, bringing this uh, law um, in, in or into force. Um, for that to happening, a lot still needs to be done um, because the AI Act, as you all know, is a hugely complex uh, legislation with 85 articles, almost 100 recitals. And even though we made a lot of progress in the last uh, weeks and months, the um, trial negotiations are now ongoing since um, early July, um, there are um, yeah, I would say almost 100 of um, open lines, so parked um, issues that are, for example, linked to uh, governance, to um, law enforcement um, elements, and so on, that we will need to rediscuss, that we need to adjust depending on um, a political deal on um, yeah, the rather crucial points, the highly debated points. And um, if I or if you would ask me to to summarize which are the main topics that are still on the table and that again are linked to all those open and parked points, I would say um, we should mention four. The first um, of all and the most tricky one are the prohibitions in um, Article Five. Um, there, as you saw in newspapers and so on, the most contentious points from those contentious points is um, remote biometrical identification. Um, it's the uh, prohibition in Article 5.1d. Um, the Parliament even added um, a kind of case where um, it's not happening in real time, um, but you are accessing um, this uh, yeah, um, biometrical um, identification data um, um, afterwards, after it was recorded. And this um, is rather tricky for member states to accept um, because they want to use it for their law enforcement um, agencies to prevent terrorist attacks like the one now um, happening in, in Brussels to find missing persons, but also for other things. To, to find here a middle ground is almost impossible um, because the parliament really wants to ban it completely and to not allow any loopholes. And um, based on the feedback of civil society, they do have a point that there were um, a lot of scandals um, where um, data was being used in a way that is really not in line um, with our European values. But there are also um, strong points that are brought forward by the member states when it's about security, but also about so far um, legally um, yeah, and commercial um, services and products that would be risked to be forbidden in the future if this ban is um, becoming too broad. 
This was RBI, um, but there are also other um, prohibitions in this article where you have uh, this clash between member states, between especially the left-wing political groups, and where we really need to go into details. Again, always trying to find this uh, difficult compromise between making the ban um, not too broad, that there are loopholes, but also um, um, yeah, not too narrow. Um, a similar thing um, is in the second uh, very contentious um, group of issues that are all related to uh, high risk. First of all, how to classify high risk. Um, so is, is it enough that um, a use case is listed in Annex 3 or like the Parliament and the Council um, were demanding, there should be a second layer. So we should also um, think about is there really a critical use in those cases that are listed in a critical sector? But how to define this, yeah, this second layer of critical use is very, very, very difficult from also a um, technical perspective, not only from a political perspective. And um, yeah, there we are now trying for a long time to, to find the right wording, but uh, still have problems. And connected to that is then, of course, still also this long list of um, high-risk sectors in um, Annex 3, um, where, again, we have law enforcement and migration um, use cases that are, of course, again, highly disputed between um, Parliament and um, Council, but also the other areas like, um, like employment, like education, and so on. We need to be extremely careful that they are not activities or deployment cases um, for the use of AI listed there that are not really risky. So a lot of rather technical work needs to be invested there. So now I was talking about two of the hot topics and uh, two more are following. The third one um, is uh, foundation models and uh, generative AI and uh, value chain. You saw there that um, the parliament, of course, had much more time to um, come to a uh, position because we were um, way later uh, finished um, compared to the council um, general approach, which was almost one year um, before the parliament's uh, position um, published. And therefore, the parliamentarians, of course, saw the rise of ChatGPT, of Claude, of um, Lama, and so on and so on. Um, we tried um, as parliament um, especially to learn a little bit from um, digital platform um, problems that there are a few very market dominant uh, players that are um, kind of creating a value chain where a lot of other um, um, commercial actors are fully depending on them. Of course, that has then also rather strong implications for um, civil liberties, for human rights, and so on and so on. We tried in this AI value chain to make it a little bit more um, transparent to accelerate the information sharing from upstream to downstream, and also to make sure um, that even though foundation models are not the focus of the AI Act, that they need to fulfill certain minimum criteria when it's um, coming to safety, when it's coming to um, cyber resilience, performance, and so on. Um, the council is not so far away from, from what I just said, but um, they um, yeah, they again, they didn't have that much time to prepare it. They didn't see all those things with ChatGBT that we in the parliament saw. So also here it's um, about finding the right wording. And I think where we can probably meet both of us, council and parliament, is really concentrating on the value chain, on the information sharing, and making sure that all the actors in the AI value chain are at least somehow covered by the AI Act. And in the end, that we allow the downstream actors to become compliant with the AI Act by having all the information necessary for being compliant. And now already the last topic, um, governance. And um, as you saw, the parliament um, pushed for the creation of an AI office. And there again, um, similar to um, topic number one and two, 
we have a parliament that wants really to learn from the mistakes with the GDPR, from situations like with the Irish DPA that maybe is not enforcing um, all the cases like they should do. And, and also other cross-border cases where, let's say, the, um, the cooperation between national DPAs is um, not um, perfectly working. Uh, we wanted to address it by centralizing um, the governance a little bit at least, um, giving the commission also a much stronger role comparable maybe to the Digital Services Act. And again, have also this AI office in a coordination role um, supporting role and so on. Again, while maybe the council um, do understand where we are coming from and uh, would support certain parts, other parts for them um, are a no-go because uh, they would mean that they would need to give up um, a lot of national uh, sovereignty competences to an European level, which of course uh, is something the council never likes to do very much. So also there, it's really um, yeah, depending on the details. Um, as you see, there is a lot still open on the table. Those four points uh, that I summarized uh, are really the, the main issues. But as I said, also a lot of park lines that we still need to rediscuss and so on. We do not have a lot of time left, basically four or five working weeks. Um, also uh, to prepare a trialogue is taking a few days. So I don't know. At the moment, I would say there is a 50-50 chance that we are still managing it. Um, but what I can tell you is that um, all the political um, parties, and the same can be said about the Commission and the member states, really want this deal because we don't believe that it would be a wise move to um, delay the adoption of the AI Act after the European election. Um, so, yeah, we, we will really give our best to, to close this file uh, at the end of this year. Uh, thank, thank you, Kai, and, and um, thank you also for, for the level of transparency that you have given uh, to this file. I mean, trilogues are renowned for being black boxes, and it's refreshing to see that we don't have to rely on, on leaks and things like that, but that you're trying to just bring some light and shed some light on the process and on the challenges. Uh, and it's, it's vastly appreciated. Um, also, you know, good luck, I, I would say, with the trilogue. And let's see if you can bring us a Christmas present, <laughs> an early Christmas present on the 6th of December. And uh, stay in touch let us know if, if there's any other updates that you can share with us because i think it's uh it's it's a very important act it's one of the crucial acts i think for the future so it's good that people are aware of what's happening and that whenever possible stakeholders can give input and and you know um give their perspective all perspectives are biased by definition but give their perspective so that you guys have a full picture of what's happening Thank you so much, and thank you to uh, your boss, MEP Axel Voss, and, and all the members of the trilogue for the hard work. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.